This is the Impact Unlimited podcast. And in today's episode, I'm joined by not just one, but two super inspiring entrepreneurial guests. They are the founders of Vabs, and they are going to inspire you with the way they think about brands and how they think about products. It's going to be a great episode, so stay tuned. Hey, what's up? And welcome to another episode of the Impact Unlimited podcast. This is the show where I sit down and interview industry leading experts with an aim to equip you with both the skill sets and the mindsets to become an impactful entrepreneur. So if you want to become a better leader, build bigger businesses, get more done in less time and create an impact in the world, then look no further and let's get started. Awesome. Well, welcome to the show today, guys. I'm here with Tebow and Jay, the absolute legends from uh, Vars, but they're going to tell us all about that. Gents, why don't you introduce yourself for us today? Let us know a little bit about yourselves and uh, a little bit about what you've been up to recently. Uh, awesome. Hey, um, hey everyone. Uh, I'm Tebs, and um, I'm here with, with Jay, my good friend and business partner. We run a brand called Vibes, and... Um, uh, essentially, it's it's a lifestyle brand, and with various offerings and expressions, clothing being one of them, um, creative creative being one of them, uh, general um, lifestyle engagement, um, and yeah, we set vibes up. I guess how long ago now, Jay? Maybe two years. Two Maybe years. Two years. Yeah. Two That's years. Nice. This June we launched. Um, yeah, just just you know, inspired by where I'm from uh, as a South African, and we've got a few products online, which is really cool. We've got some great journals and some great content, and um, yeah, it's 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 been a real fun journey, really really cool. And yeah, yeah that's me. Talk to uh, yeah, Jay. You introduce yourself as well. Sorry, go on. Yeah, no worries. I'm Jay. I'm the creative director of Vibes. Um, and a brand experience designer. Uh, so I work across all the creative platforms um, for the brand. And yeah, just making it look and feel as good as it possibly can. Nice, nice. Well, I've heard a lot of good things about Jay. I've uh, known Tebow for a long time, but I've heard lots of good things about you. So looking forward to this, uh, oh, this conversation. <laughs> okay. Good things. Um, yeah, absolutely. So talk to me, gents, about the um, yeah the early days of Vibes. Obviously, Tebow, you mentioned about your roots in South Africa. What was the um, what were those initial conversations like? Because obviously, business partners, um, young guys, entrepreneurial spirit coming together to start something. It's quite an exciting journey. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people listening that would maybe want to go on that journey with a friend. Um, yeah, talk to us a little bit about that that dynamic, that first sort of idea, how it all went happened. Um, yeah, a bit of the process. Yeah, sure. So um, I had I had this word vibes. It was a word I've, I've I always used, and and I guess I got to a stage where man, I was just like, I, I love I love clothing. I love fashion. That's my thing. I love fabrics. I love aesthetic. I love design. And the only problem was I wasn't a designer. Um, I knew nothing about design, which is an interesting start. Um, and so I thought to myself, man, how, how, how on earth could I, I start a brand? How could I design clothing? I've never designed a t-shirt in, ever in my life. Um, never considered myself a designer, but I thought, man, I probably need to, need to hook up with somebody who, who could really look into that aspect, that side of things. And a lot of mm. just creative vision and direction. I, know, I knew what I like. Uh, I was very passionate. I still am very passionate. And uh, I worked with Jay's brother at All Saints uh, in Birmingham, which is really cool. And, and somehow Jay came on my radar and I reached out to Jay and we'd never met each other, never spoken. I literally reached out to this guy and, and, we, and we met up and we had an insane discussion where we just clicked. We were so aligned in our passion and what we wanted to create and curate that it just worked like, like just from the first meeting, you know, like I just remember Jay making a stack of notes, had his notebook, his pen out, uh, just making notes. And, and yeah, bro, we literally took it day by day from there. We started to, 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 to just think about the brand and how the brand looks, how the brand, you know, sounds. Jay came back to me the second time we met with, 
with all these ideas. I was like, what on earth is happening? I'd probably never seen like a creative development presentation in any sense, you know, I could, it was a few ideas, but to me it was like, it was crazy. There's like mood boards. Jay had done some cool stuff with the, with, 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 with vibes, the words started thinking about um, fonts and logo designs. I was blown away, you know? So, so it was, yeah, just for me that, that, that click was everything. And, and I think, I think that's what you've got to, we were, we were, we were talking, we were having a creative brainstorm session the other day with a guy and we were talking about how like starting something like this on your own is the hardest thing in the world. Mm. And having, having somebody alongside you, who can actually on days where you feel like, man, this is rough. I want to give up having someone come alongside you and say, Hey, look, man, come on, you know, we can do this. Just a couple of days ago, Jay and I were there, we're having a discussion. One of us was like, Oh man, this is tough. I was like, bro, come on. You know, we have those discussions all the time. And so, so it was important for me to, 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 to hook up with somebody who has a completely different skill set to me. Um, and so we just, we made it work and yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I think there's so much we could, you know, dig into that. I suppose I probably want to just dig into a couple of aspects in terms of the brand of Vibes, but then also a bit later on, I'd love to grill you some more about that partnership because I know, um, yeah, just, I'd love to hear more about those strengths. Maybe there's been some challenges in that as well. And, um, yeah, I'd love to hear some more about that. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about Vibes initially. Um, so Jay, yeah, it's, uh, obviously it's evident from like the branding and everything I've seen of it. I see, you know, I, I know we have a similar friend circle to Tebow, but, uh, I, I see it all the time on my social media. People love the products. Uh, what's the journey been like, you know, from conception to now, uh, obviously it's a, an active brand. Talk us through that sort of, uh, that, that, that process. Yeah, sure, man. Thank you for your kind words. Um, I think it's been a crazy process that, like touching on what Tebow said, obviously, like it, the partnership sort of made sense from day one. Like I'm, uh, I describe myself as like an experienced designer, so I work with brands like graphically, but also on like physical and um, like retail experiences, like brand environments, mm-hmm. um, and then down to product as well. So it's just really about um, capturing a brand in in whatever form that takes. Uh, so like that's the key, really, for me to understand. Like I think from the work I did previously, I, I knew from the offset that it, it had to be more than about the product. Um, cause there's so many options and there's so much, um, like you can't compete on convenience because of brands like Amazon. Um, and you can't compete on heritage because of like the real iconic fashion houses. So it's about creating something that people brought into. So from day one, we just dis- um, discussed this idea of a lifestyle brand and saying, okay, like what is the lifestyle we want people to buy into? Yeah. And then what is the product of that lifestyle? So the product was always secondary. And um, obviously when we come down to the product, it has to talk for itself. So it has to be unbelievable quality. We knew straight away if we were doing a hoodie, it needed to be seriously heavy um, yeah. and stuff like this. So we knew that the cotton needs to be organic. Um, so there's stuff that we, we wouldn't compromise on. But I think, I think the bigger message is that it was always more than the product um, right. in terms of the brand. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, like I say, that's definitely evident. Um, yeah, talk us a few things again on that, just in terms of product quality, because there'll be a lot of people listening. I know my audience, a lot of them are building physical product brands and, you know, there can be a, a temptation to go for the cheapest thing possible, uh, volume over quality. Uh, talk to us about that side of quality. Um, a, how have you gone through ensuring the quality, you know, in terms of sourcing those products? Talk to us a bit about that. But also, you know, are you glad you went down that route? Because obviously, with the quality comes a higher ticket price how have those dynamics worked out for you yeah do you know what it's it's, it's hard it, and it, it as many many points and i can give you a few examples like straight now um where where you question compromising because mm. it's so much easier to make things cheap cheaper quicker and, and worse mm. so first example is um the last product we launched was the pro tier t-shirt um and we love the idea of like a, a sort of washed out, um, what they call garment dyed. So they make the garment out of a, a, a sort of neutral color and then they dye it post-production. So it means you right. get like the sort of washed out look in the creases and the seams. Mm. Um, obviously up until that point, all our products have been organic and our manufacturer highlighted that like, if we wanted to create a real garment dyed look, we couldn't use organic cotton because the dye would make it no longer organic. So we had to right. sit down and have a conversation and say, look, do we compromise on organic? quality and the sort of eco benefits or do we do what we want to do and compromise on the design um 
in the end we went with the organic cotton because we felt like we had to be sort of true to that that message and um, so we had to compromise the design and um, so that's like a great example straight away where uh, mm. if you if you do something cheaper and quicker it is easier so you do mm. have to really you do, i think you just have to set out straight away and it comes out it comes back to branding and your brand values like making that decision would have been against our brand values because we're a social yeah. social enterprise and yeah. we're about like consistency so to, to do that for, for a better potentially a, a visually better t-shirt would, would have been incorrect and then yeah. just the other day we're looking um for new manufacturers at the moment um and the process is drawn out purely because of the level of quality we are after and we have to ensure for our customers mm-hmm. so um i'm working with with louis who, who heads up a lot of our production at the moment and we basically having to skip past a number of productions companies that we could start with because they won't reach the quality that we're after. Right. Um, so it draws out the process, it slows down production, it makes it more costly. But it's a decision that we have to make because we want to ensure that we, we're giving the customer the best products we can. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Are you guys sticking to like local uh, manufacturers? Yeah, so the first collection was designed in, in uh, manufactured in England. It was yeah. actually a, a cotton mill in Leicester. And they actually drove the fabric around the corner where it was constructed. So it was like a, a beautiful life cycle of the product yeah, so and good. really sort of local. And then um, we then sort of moved the second batch to Portugal okay. um, yeah. because Portugal is sort of iconic for growing cotton. So you find that organic cottons um, can be a lot better because they've yeah. been so far ahead in, in the, cotton, the cotton industry. Um, for our next collection, it's sort of up in the air, really. Like we have benefits from each place. Um, so we, we'll never use places that we don't that don't sit well with us. Um, sure. Portugal, we identified at the start because of the quality of the cotton, and obviously the UK. Like it's great yeah, to have yeah. things made here. Um, and yeah, so we're nice. talking to our UK supplier again. So yeah, we we always keep it um, pretty pretty tightly knit. Yeah, that's good. That's inspiring. I think um, you know so much of what you're saying as well resonates with you know people that I've been interviewing for for this podcast to launch, and you know been looking out for sort of successful people that built brands that make a difference that make an impact and it so resonates what you're saying with what with what they've been saying about how you know you need to build a brand you need to lead from values you know you need to know what those yeah. values are lead with those and I love what you're saying about how the products have been secondary because it's okay we're trying to achieve this with the brand um, and once we set that out then the products will flow after that which I love um, uh, cause I think one of the things about Vibes as well is what's different to maybe a traditional clothing line is it's quite a small product range, right? But, um, mm-hmm. you know, how have you, have you found that as a, as a dynamic? Because a lot of people that if they wanted to start a clothing line, they think oh, I'm going to have t-shirts, hoodies, trousers, jackets, shoes, mm-hmm. you know, everything. But you guys have gone in a bit of a different direction. Talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, I think, um, I think that came down to the point on quality, um, mm-hmm. in order to, to create quality products it, it it means that it's it's a high cost and so um it's probably not by choice but also by intentionality it's 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 a bit of both because we always wanted to be 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 inclusive uh, have a bit of an inclusive and exclusive element to to our offering and so we wanted to create cool products but we wanted it you, you know we wanted to reach people who really wanted to engage with us and so like it costs a lot of money to, to, to produce a thousand t-shirts, you know, but mm. we thought, man, let's do 50 t-shirts. Let's do 50 hoodies um, and, and not go wild, but really control, um, have, have a bit of control, have a bit of management and, and see how we go because we also wanted to, to test out the brand. You know, I spoke yeah, to, yes. I spoke to one guy who was advising me, and, uh, you know, he was saying, oh, like, like vibes won't make sense to people. You know, it's, it's it probably in, you know, try in about four or five years time, you know, like it's too soon for, for a, a word like that to even hit the market because no one's going to get it. So, you know, you know, when you're hearing stuff like that, you're like, okay, let's, let's test, let's test the brand. You know, is this going to resonate with people? You know, it's, it's got a bit of a South African story. How's that going to work in the UK? How's that going to work globally? You know, we've got a, we got a global vision, actually. We want people in Australia to wear our stuff. We want people yeah. to, in America to engage. We want Germans to engage. You know, so there's all these things you're thinking about pre-launch. And so um, I, I would say it's actually been quite strategic just, just starting small yeah. and, and growing outside of the mm-hmm. fact that to go big, it, it, it costs a fortune, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, and yeah. we didn't have a fortune. You know? yeah. We, we had then, passion, yeah. we had an idea and, and we, yeah. 
Yeah, Can't and I, I suppose the, the opposite to that argument is that going small costs more in a way because like our margins yeah. are nowhere near what, what like, you know, when people say, oh, I bet, I bet you make that for a tenner. You have to laugh because you go, I, I wish I made it for a tenner. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. when we're making 50, 50 high quality organic products in the UK, like yeah. our margin is small and, and, it, and sometimes it's hard to deal with the small mats because we have, we have people messages saying like, oh, can I get a hoodie? And you can't get them because when they were dropped, mm-hmm. they sold. And, and now when, when it's right for us, we'll drop them back on the thing. But prior mm-hmm. to that, we've been developing other products. Um, so there's a bit of a balance because you, you fight and demand. Um, but yeah, it's just about, that's where the exclusivity comes into. I think the products are, are mm-hmm. super inclusive and the branding and our tone yeah. of voice inclusive, but the products are super exclusive. So if, if you've got it, you got it. Yeah, like one of cool. fifty, you know, one of fifty people have a red hoodie. You know, it's like yeah, that's cool. No, I like it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, that is good. That is good. So, um, yeah, uh, with the the lifestyle nature of it, you talked about, that's uh, quite an interesting concept as well. Because obviously, people, a lot of people that want to start a clothing brand, think that's all they think is clothes. But you guys have got bigger yeah. plans than that. So, um, yeah, if you're comfortable obviously as much as you're comfortable talk to us a bit about the journey and where things are going from here and how it's going to develop mm. um gosh yeah uh, you know like with everything that's happening in the world right now you know this has really caused us to think about the lifestyle side of our brand just even more you know we've we've got we've got the clothing we've got also a creative agency that we're developing where we want to come alongside new brands new startups and and get into brand development for others having you know having created having created vibes you know we've got a great team of guys that we're working with um to actually to actually create brands you know that's something we're passionate about and and then the lifestyle thing has really come in for us you know like we've got a, on our website we've got a journal a journal page where where we're, you know, it's, it's us engaging with, you know, we call it the vibes family, you know, where we're writing, writing about some cool stuff, interviewing some of the people we've worked with. We've had the privilege of working with, with, you know, some models and some influencers literally around the world, you know, with, 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 you know, we've got some people who've got, you know, products, some of our products in, in, in a number of countries. And so it's been really cool to engage with these people. We had a guy on our recent blog, a guy called Chris, who's in Switzerland. You know, he's just, we just asked him a few questions. And it's just, you know, it's just great to actually get into conversation with some people who are wearing our product because we're not just interested in you wearing our product, yeah. but we're actually interested in, like, what's your story, you know? So, uh, your story, our vibe is our, yeah. is our strap line, you know? And that's, right. we're passionate about that. We're passionate about story. And, you know, we're storytellers. We want to we wanna tell stories and we want to help others tell their story. Which, which is where Vibes Creative comes in. And so, you know, on our site, we've got stuff like playlists, you know, like working from home playlists, which is cool. Uh, we're currently working on, I don't know if I can say now, on, can we say, Jay? I don't know. When, is this September? Ah, oh, it's fine. We can say. Um, oh, we're currently secret, working on some, some, some art Exclusive work, drop. Really, <laughs> yeah, exclusive drop. Um, it's going to happen now. There's no some, choice. It's gonna happen now. Is it some <laughs> some prints? Because people are like, you know, we're thinking everyone's at home, like everyone's at mm. home. So you know, what what's different thinking about? They're thinking about interior. They're thinking about their space. And we're mm. big on interior. We're big on on space. You know, like the space that you're in, it either helps your creative juices flow or it just really stifles it. And so so we're particular about design. We're particular about like what goes on the walls. So we've got we've got some some print designs happening in the background at the moment, which is cool. Um, we got we're launching creative brainstorm sessions where where people can come can sign up to having some creative brainstorm sessions with us, just talking about their brand, their idea. Just thirty minutes. It's really quick, but just hopefully enough time to to fire people up because we truly believe everybody. I mean, we truly believe everybody should have a side hustle. Like. Everybody listening to this now, I'm so glad you're listening to this because because you, that says to me that you 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 got you got a number of passions. You know, I, I think gone are the days of doing one thing. Mm. It's you know, it's I think it's either or. It's it's not either or, but it's but I think we're living in the days of and like and right. this and that. You know, mm. so so we're passionate about side hustles. We're passionate about people just exploring their creativity and not and not letting that just be suppressed in becoming a lawyer or an accountant or a doctor. These things are cool. Yeah, yeah. But I find a lot of those people have like, have creative genius, you know, a bit of creative genius inside of them that they probably, yeah. 
on exploring and we want to we want to get in on that you know and, yeah. and kind of how people explore that so that's just like a bit of a, a yeah. few thoughts yeah. on what's happening um, yeah, I don't know, adding to that as well job. like obviously you mentioned like um talking about this sort of journey of being a lifestyle brand i think like tebo's like highlighted it so well there like what we would suggest we offer um, which comes a lot down to understanding what, what our, our customer or like our family needs, um, yeah. which is one way we sort of a lifestyle brand. But I think, I think if you scroll through our Instagram right now, I, I don't think we've posted a caption about product this year. Uh-huh. Um, if we have, I think it was in January when we said like, who, who's still after a black hoodie. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that sort of summarizes it a bit. Like um, the content is about playlists and it's about like, who's missing going for a coffee. It's like, what are you guys doing this weekend? It's sort of yeah. poetic stuff. Um, like we don't talk about products really. Obviously, mm. when we when we have to, because we're dropping new products, we'll let we'll let them know there's products. But um, it's just about people buying into much more. It's buying it literally is it's that lifestyle. It's like looking at this brand and saying, "Do am, am I envious of something there, or do I see myself in something there? Like, do I want to live that life?" Yeah, um, yeah. So that's how it really resonates beyond products, and um, we really do like actively push that like the captions i think is a great example that mm. like, we don't talk about products really mm. yeah for sure it's so powerful as well you know like you're mentioning this story of it and i think it's so so it's, it's a difference maker you know when there's so many people out there just trying to sell as many products as possible and you know you've got a brand that you're building that tells a story that makes a difference makes an impact and you guys like you've got a charitable um sort of uh, operation as well or charitable you know something that you tell us about that what you do, what you do there as well uh, yeah, so we, we, from the beginning, we wanted to make sure that we are, we're giving back, we're helping people. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's, that's not something we shout about. It's in the very core of who we are, you know, mm-hmm. as, even, even as our business is developing, it's, it has that in mind that we want to actually help people. Yeah. And so, you know, as a South African, I kind of thought, man, it would be cool to, to do something in South Africa. So we reached out to this charity called Beautiful Gate. Um, and they work with kids, you know, who've got HIV and they come from just a lot of, you know, abusive scenarios, their backgrounds aren't great. And so, you know, a portion of every sale, uh, we put aside for beautiful gates. So, you know, recently we made our first transfer to those guys. So good. So good. Yeah. They're, they're so pleased. So, so we're trying, yeah, just to make sure that we're not looking down all the time, but we're also looking up, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, and we're looking yeah, around I think, us, um, you know. Yeah, Sorry. I think That's that adds to like our, our sort of like our consciousness, and um, mm. I think often now, like obviously, sustainability is so important. Um, but we're really sort of like trying to train our minds to not see that as um, like organic cotton, full stop. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like it's it's what they call circular economy. So it's just thinking about the whole lifestyle of the product and like mm. the disparity the fashion industry has caused over the years goes beyond using too much cotton and too much water um, and yeah. so by us putting money back into the communities that we are in somewhat connected to and um, we see as part of that so it's sort of beyond the product sale okay what can we do with, with this money we give some back into that community to try and like boost that up a bit and um, as well as using organic cotton and non, no plastic and all this stuff so i think it just adds that message of just like trying to do more good at every po- every touch point of that life cycle totally, totally. Yeah, for sure. Now it's super inspiring, guys. Like honestly, really, really inspiring. I think there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are thinking, oh, man, what you know, what can I give back from from what I'm doing with my business? So hopefully that makes a difference in that way too. Um and I think, you know, out of this, my hope is that a whole pe- a whole bunch of people hear this and think, you know, I'm gonna give a whole lot more thought to the, you know, the story behind my brand, the, the quality of the products that I'm bringing to the world because you know, the world doesn't need more crappy products. You know, there's enough of those. Mm-hmm. It needs good quality brands with good quality products. So, um, yeah, super encouraging and inspiring. Um, I'm obviously just conscious that I've been grilling you for a while now. So um, before I <laughs> let you good. go and enjoy your evening, um, talk to me a bit about the partnership side of it, guys, because I know there'd be people out there as well listening that'd be thinking about maybe doing a partnership with a friend, um, yeah. you know, or, you know, maybe going alone. And there are positives and negatives to both, right? Just um, speak into that for a little bit for us, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting listening to Tebow explain the partnership at the start. Because <laughs> um, obviously, if, if I tell that same story, it's from like a completely different perspective. Sure. Yeah, and I think that's probably good because you got guys coming into this from a creative aspect, from a sales aspect, um, or just from a vision aspect. And um, the key thing is that these guys need some different support. Mm. Um, 
So for me, like obviously I was designing brands for clients um, I'd had my own brands, like really small stuff in the past and advised people in the past. Um, and I had a lot, I had a lot of people who would reach out to me. And um, I actually remember when my brother told me about Tebow, I, I remember saying like that I'd been, I'd, at the moment I didn't need any more work. Um, but his message sounded interesting. So I thought like I'll go for a coffee with him, no problem. And then like, it is, it is as simple as that. Do you know what I mean? Like the connection on the day, like, you know, I mean, um, I've worked on other brands, um, some stuff like really recent as well, where, where the relationship like is the, is the biggest downfall. Like it goes beyond um, the products, the branding, the money, anything. Like if you don't share that vision with someone, um, then it's, it's, it's literally just not going to work because there's so many like tension points just daily um, mm. when it goes to like someone needs to do something or a decision needs to be made. Um, all this stuff that you go through daily, like if, if you're not working um, like with someone you, you fully connect with, and like, it's not about sharing the same opinion. You know what I mean? It's about respecting each other's opinions. And um, as a designer, one of the first things you learn is like not to be precious about ideas. Mm. So you understand that you put an idea out there in a creative meeting. And if someone doesn't think that's the right idea f- for the end goal, then you have to accept that straight away. And um, mm. so I think that's where we, we work quite well. Like Tebow has that sort of like level of authority where he can make a decision quick. So as a creative, because I'm not precious about my ideas, I can put four in front of him and he can pick one and we move on. Right. Um, so I think just understanding your skill set firstly um, so, and, and what you need to, to sort of balance that out, but then also understanding like your personality as well. So I've worked with people in the past um, where actually the direct opposite of that where I needed more authority from them. Mm-hmm. Um, like I felt like I could make all the decisions and sometimes that's not ideal um, sure. because you, you know what I mean? You want it to be joint thing and you want to complement each other. It's about yeah. complementing each other, not, not being the same. So um, I think there's the two, the two channels really like do, what's your personality missing and what's your skill set missing? And like, if that needs four people, it needs four people. If it needs one person, it needs one person. If, if that person doesn't exist, then have a crack on your own. Do you know what I mean? I don't mm. think there's anything wrong with like, ha- like starting it on your own and then jumping on, on your network for, for help here and there. And, um, but yeah, I think them two things are like really key for me and why it took me quite a while to find the right partnership. And like, I can't then replicate that partnership either. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful story. It's a great story. It's lovely, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot Tebow is there. I, I don't usually tell him. No, it's good. I'm just like a little, little tear sort of streaming down. <laughs> no, no, Give me a minute here, guys. I'm sweating from my eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, well, as I said, like, it's, like at the moment, it's, it's quite relevant for me. And I think it, like, basically I've, I've had something recently not work out because of relationships. And I think it, sure. it just emphasizes how key that is. It goes beyond skill sets yeah. and everything. And mm. um, it's just about getting that. If you get that right, then like it will just keep, it'll just snowball. Mm. And it's like, it's like the business, right? It comes back to those vision and values start from that point. Yeah. And if you know you're solid on those, then everything else will work itself out. Yeah. yeah you've got to get them right. And you've got to agree the value of them. Um, yeah. So that's, so that's what was called. Like both understanding that, like obviously I knew we needed brand values and, and Timo understand stood how important they were. So you work on them over and over again, you get creative writers in, you, you like test them against people. And then when they're right, like we, we had a brand workshop recently that was uh, 18 months into our brand and we got our, our four brand values out and they were exactly the same. We didn't, I think we, we took out a couple of words in the description, just grammatical, but we, we just agreed that, that, yeah, that's exactly the same thing. So two years of running the business and we still felt, that's what we stood for yeah, what awesome. we said we should stand for two years ago. So I think it's a great example that if you spend the time on it and get it right, um, then it will help for the longevity. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. No, it's so good. And a, a lot of people won't do it because they want to go the cheap and quick route, but there will be some brands out there that want to, uh, you know, really align themselves with where they're going for the long term. Cause the more I talk to you guys, I'm like, geez, this thing's going to grow and grow and grow. You know, it might not blow up overnight cause that's not your intention, but it's going to, yeah. it's got such firm foundations that this thing is, there's, there's longevity in it. Right. And so I think there'll be people that will be listening that will be inspired by that. Um, you guys mentioned about uh, like a branding work shop um you know forgive me if the terminology is different but um if people do want to get in touch with you guys what's the best place to reach out um you know maybe inquire with you about that yeah um our instagram just dm us at vibes.co um mm-hmm. also on our v-a-a-b-s v-a-a-b-s dot V-A-A-B-S. co yeah and okay. also on our website there are email addresses there both mine and jay's emails on our latest blog um work from home number two 
So just jump on. We're so easy to reach, man. And they yeah. would love to chat yeah. to anybody who's, yeah, who's, who's got an idea. You want to explore creativity. Um, yeah, hit us yeah, up. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, well, obviously we'll get all the links to to Vabs and to, to you guys in the um, in the show notes for the podcast. But um, but yeah, hopefully some people reach out and um, really avail your services because that is um, it's clear from me just chatting to you guys for a little bit how passionate you are about it, but also you know how how helpful this could be. So uh, listen, I really appreciate you guys coming on. Um, yeah, maybe just as we close, um, just as we close, one last sort of your like your biggest last little tip for budding entrepreneurs out there. What would you say to uh, to help them be successful in these crazy times we're living in mm, jay <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i feel i feel like the answer is different each week but i think i think right now for, for me it's it's like just really knowing like what what they need because um like at, at the end of the day like everyone's getting everything they need from somewhere so like who is your customer and what do they need like we talk about doing like user profiles like name like make up a name age occupation where do they shop yeah, yeah. what do they do so you just fully know who you're targeting then and then and then the whole thing becomes mm-hmm. a lot easier because you can just it's about it's a balance between subjective and objective so we add our subjectivity to it what we think is cool but then we have to be objective to what we know our customer wants and mm-hmm. um, so yeah i think it's just like customer first sort of thing yeah good stuff. yeah that's great yeah i would say uh, knowing your gift is key um so the first thing I tried to do was an Amazon business, right? And I just, I was so uninspired by that. Like it's working, like it was working for like a lot of my friends, right? And I thought I could do this, but I just, I, I didn't get into it at all. Like, but I, I always loved fashion. I just, I didn't know how to monetize that. I just, I had to, had to really think and, and, and talk to people who were doing mm. stuff, you know? And yeah. so, so I think knowing your gift is key so that it doesn't feel like work. You know, yeah. and you just and you just flow, and it's just fun, and you know, like vibes doesn't feel like work in mm. the slightest. You know, um, yeah. I feel like we're in our zone, we're in our lane, and and just stick at it. You know, it, nothing's quick. It's you know, it's it, yeah, it takes time. True. That's the best advice I ever got. Was that <laughs> it takes time. So yeah. for sure, yeah. No, so I think it's such a fundamental shift because I know for me it's such a game changer, right? When I went from the idea of oh, I want to try and make some more money so I can do the things mm. I'm passionate about to realizing, mm. hey, why can't these two things coexist? You know, why right. can't what I'm passionate about and what I get income from be, you know, the same thing? So I think that's the that's the magic spot there, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, totally. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much, guys, for coming on. Really appreciate having you on the show and uh, look forward to seeing the amazing growth of Vibes over the years. Our pleasure, bro. Thank Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. Hey, well, thanks so much for being with us on the Impact Unlimited podcast today. If the content has helped you in any way, please reach out. We would love to hear from you. Tag us on the socials if anything has inspired you from this episode. And listen, if you've got two minutes to spare, we'd love it if you'd leave us a review on your chosen podcast platform. Honestly, we'd be forever grateful. And to show that, when you do, be sure to enter our monthly appreciation prize draw where we give away Amazon vouchers to our podcast community. Simply head to impactunlimited.com slash podcast that's impact unlimited unltd.com slash podcast in order to find out all the information as well as explore more free training content listen it's been a pleasure and remember don't just make an income make an impact all right we'll see you next week